Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Farmers markets are open for business, but it's not business as usual. In order to open safely, markets have worked with specialists at UVM Extension. The Bennington Farmers Market, which holds winter and summer markets, became a test case. The leader of Extension's agricultural engineering program, Chris Callahan, took a call from a farmer in Bennington looking for guidance about what to do during these trying times. Chris picks up the story from here. We were actually talking about another project um, that's coming up for them. And uh, they, they said, so while I have you on the phone, that, you know, we're, we're trying to think about what, what our farmer's market looks like in the context of this thing. And here's what we're thinking. And they had maybe six, you know, six points of, what, of how they were changing. And it was things like, we're moving everybody to online ordering. Uh, we're only doing curbside pickup. We're going to have a route through the parking lot. Um, we're going to have uh, customers coming at certain times by phone, by last name. And I thought, this is golden. You know, this is just great. Like, I didn't come up with this. Uh, but it did dawn on me that here's a group that's been thinking about this. They're a little, for whatever reason, a little bit earlier on it. Um, and part of that might've been some of the first cases were, were down this way that's in right. Bennington. It struck me that we have a lot of lessons being learned by everybody and trying to provide a structure in a, uh, in, in a form of a document for sharing some of those lessons. Uh, that was the motivation. And so the, the fact sheet that I put together was really taking some of the CDC guidance uh, around best practices for everybody, not right. just agriculture, but for everybody, yep. and combining that with lessons learned from other, from growers and from farmers markets uh, leaders, um, and pu putting it into a distilled form that wasn't overwhelming. Right. Um, it was somewhat digestible and actionable. There's no indication that COVID-19 is spread through contact with food. Have you set up any additional guidelines or recommendations for safely handling food during the pandemic? One of the other motivations for drafting some of these educational resources and fact sheets was to, to really uh, make the point very clearly that you know, our current understanding is that uh, COVID-19 is not spread through food. Um, you know, it, there's a chance it's spread through the other activities that surround distribution of food. Sure. Um, and so that's, that's really the point is it's not so much changing anything about really the produce. It's about the humans that make the produce possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good point. Um, Good point. You know, I, and I think the, the other thing is that it, to keep in mind is, um, in a local food economy, I think is, is quite strong. I think that our groceries, our uh, farmers markets, CSAs, and m most importantly, our farmers have been taking this very seriously. Um, the, the phone calls we've been having uh, with folks and the emails we've received and the sharing of uh, decisions and lessons learned from farms to other farms, it, it really just points out to me that um, there's a lot of activity developing, very creative. Uh, science-based safe uh, plans for for ensuring ensuring that the local food supply is, is is viable. What are the challenges for growers as they adjust to new guidelines regarding farmers markets? It's probably the same the same challenges that most growers have had, which is uh, moving to an online ordering system. Uh, okay. So moving from a um, you know, a, a pointing uh, ordering system to a, yep. an online uh, ordering system um, and, and doing that in a way that all vendors can, you know, that, that's somewhat coordinated to, so that the, the consumer experience is still not, is still sort of um, relatively easy. I think some of the other challenges will be, it, it's in all of us, you know, the minute we, we see another human being <laughs> even six feet away, <laughs> right. you know, let alone three or four, you know, dozens um yeah. you know there's an urge to connect and i think um that's probably going to be the biggest challenge is just mm -hmm. human nature and and trying to trying to communicate what the expectations are to, to market goers does this new way of business provide farmers with opportunities to grow their markets these changes that we'll see and at, at farmers markets um definitely present as much of an opportunity as they do a challenge um when when bennington shifted to this this new model um again they, they saw record numbers 
of attendance. It seems to me that there is no lack for market in the local food economy. It may take some work to pivot. Uh, it may take some work to set up these online ordering and distribution, uh, right. alternate distribution systems. Uh, it'll take a lot of communication with customers. Um, uh, but it, my sense is that the, the consumers in our area are still very eager to buy uh, food, mm -hmm. <laughs> first of all. And I, think, and I think this is an option that is really very attractive mm. uh, to even more, even to people who haven't traditionally maybe been a heavy farmer's market attendees. What about customers, Chris? What should they expect when they go to the farmer's market? I think the key for farmer's market customers is, you know, be patient, be flexible, reach out to the, the, the growers and the vendors that you normally buy from mm -hmm. ahead of time, give them a call, send them an email, check their website to understand what they're doing and, mm -hmm. and how they would like to receive your order. Um, know that it's going to be different, most likely, um, and that each vendor might, be, uh, might have a slightly different process. Um, and, and the other thing is, remember, uh, it, it, yeah, I think it, this is not going to be predominantly a social event. It's about getting food. Right. Um, that doesn't mean we can't be social. And if I've got, got a, a great colleague who keeps on saying, you know, let's stop calling it social distancing. We need to rebrand this thing. It's physical distancing. We can okay. still be social. We can still smile. We can still say hi and wave. You can even laugh, even though you can't see it under the mask. Look for, <laughs> look for the wrinkles at the corner of the eyes. Right. You know, uh, we can still share an experience. For more information about how UVM Extension is helping farmers and Vermonters in response to COVID-19, visit uvm.edu slash extension. We wanted to see for ourselves how farmers markets are working under the guidelines of the Vermont Agency of Agriculture. So across the fence, headed to the Capital City Farmers Market in Montpelier to talk with organizers and farmers to find out how it's going. This is the second week of our summer market season in our new location at 2 Taylor Street, which we are very excited about. Uh, and we're, it's not the usual farmer's market that you would have seen in the past. Uh, we won't be having any events or any music or anything like that for probably quite a while, but uh, I'd say it's the safest shopping experience uh, in town, really. Uh, all vendors are wearing masks and gloves. We have uh, enforced social distancing. Everything is sanitized. Um, it's a really, uh, it's a nice place to be on a Saturday. We're a four season uh, market, so we actually operate in the winter and we were about halfway through our winter season when all of this uh, came crashing down and we were shut down by the state. Uh, it took us about a month and a half to really fight and uh, get open again. Uh, and so in that short period of time, uh, we really pivoted the entire business operation so that we were no longer a social gathering place, but we were instead, uh, you know, a very critical uh, food supply source, so, or food supply chain. So uh, we really just wanted to get food to people that needed it, and our farmers have a lot of stuff in the ground right now that needed to have a distribution um, spot. So we operated a couple of weeks just as a pickup location when we weren't allowed to actually operate. Uh, and now we're very excited to be able to do this again with uh, customers able to walk through and safely purchase food. So when you come to the market, usually there will be a little bit of a line. Uh, we try to keep it moving fairly quickly, but we monitor the number of people that go into the market at a time. So we don't have too many. So please wait patiently and socially distanced. Uh, and then once you get into the market, you're going to follow a one-way traffic pattern that uh, comes down and around the corner and then back out the exit. There is a little turnaround if you get to the end and realize, oh, I forgot spinach. You can always turn around and go back through. Um, you're not gonna be able to touch anything, so you're gonna shop with your eyes. Uh, you're gonna tell the vendor what you would like while you made a wait on your spot and uh, they will go and fetch your produce for you. And once it's been placed on the table, you can take it and leave. We do have a pickup only line, so if you've pre-ordered something and you just want to come and pick it up but you don't need to come through the market, we'll have a separate line for those people so they don't have to wait to get in. It's a little bit slower this time of year because we're so early in the season, but uh, in the middle of summer, I'd say we'd we, typically we, we would, have, would have had anywhere from 50 to 60 average on a summer, uh, on a summer season day. Um, we're at about 25 to 30 now, depending on the week. We're only missing a few of our farms who just uh, are struggling right now with um, finding enough help. Uh, really hard to do for them right now. So uh, we're, we're minus a couple of farms and maybe a couple of prepared food vendors. But other than that, um, we're all here.
there's never been a more clear time about how important local food is. This is the way we should be eating all the time. And I think it's becoming very obvious to people now that, oh my goodness, why haven't I been doing this? Uh, or if they have been doing it, now they understand the importance of why they've been doing it. So absolutely, uh, CSA shares I know are booming right now. Um, but uh, yeah, we're lucky to have these farmers that still want to show up even on a snowy day like today uh, and, and feed us, because otherwise we wouldn't make it. This season the farmers market has been pretty tricky. Um, we've primarily just relied on the farmers market um, for a long time as our primary source of income. So when the initial winter market was cancelled, um, we just had to immediately figure something out and we started doing the, the pre-orders and direct marketing um, and then that sort of incorporated into the market structure now. Um, and it's, it's working, we're paying our bills. Um, <laughs> It is definitely a lot more work to, to sort of do the pre-order style of, of marketing just because we're small and there's, you know, it's just a, a, just a couple of us doing it all. Um, overall, really, really happy that the farmer's market is able to be here um, and it's really important for us and all the other producers who, who make their living here. Um, so that's just, it's been huge. It's important to note that farmers markets are permitted to operate under specific guidelines to ensure public safety. Please be sure to check individual market websites for any changes to market operations due to COVID-19 crisis before visiting the market. And that's our program for today. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.